Hello, this is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm here with another 12 Weeks of Fall and Halloween. It's week number seven, so it's time for a Halloween project. And I'm using the Cauldron Bubble Bundle again. I've used this quite a bit. You can make so many different kinds of Halloween projects with it. I really like it a lot. This week, this little project is going to hold a little Hershey Nugget candy bar. So if you just want to give somebody a little treat, you could whip some of these out really quick just to make the candy bar a little more special. Okay, I'll uh, show you the uh, bundle. Here's the stamp set. It's Cauldron Bubble. And I use the Cauldron stamp with this one and the Bubble Trouble, Bubble, Bubble Toil and Trouble stamp. But you'll see all the different images there. It's really a really cute set. And it coordinates with these dies. And if you buy them together with the bundle, it, you save 10%. And I think the only die we'll be using today is the Cauldron uh, die in the set. I love the spider web. There's just a lot of really neat uh, dies in this set. Okay, let's get started. First off, you need a three and three quarter by two and a quarter piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm going to take my Tuxedo Memento pad and I'm going to uh, stamp the cauldron stamp two times on this sheet. Make sure we get it inked up really good. Stamp it here. And stamp it right next to it. Okay, now it's a little easier to do the stamping before you die cut, so I'm going to go ahead and start coloring. What I'm using are the Basic Black Stampin' Blends, the Pumpkin Pie Stampin' Blends, and the Highland Heather Stampin' Blends. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Dark Pumpkin Pie, I'm going to use the smaller tip on this one because the images are so small. And I'm going to color in the inside pieces of the flames. You know how when you look at flames, uh, the hotter section is darker than the rest? So we're just going to color that in there. Make sure you get the lid on. You don't want the alcohol to ink to dry quickly. And I'm even going to color over the dark area a little bit just to blend it in a little more so it's not such a stark color change. So get this all colored in quickly. And the reason I use a memento pad is because this is the ink pad that you use when you stamp and blends. You can't use stays on or those others, other black ink pads. This one is the one that works with the alcohol markers. Stays on would start to smear if you used it with the alcohol markers. Okay, I've got the flames done. Oh, and I did want to make these little handles orange too, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the light colored one here. There we go. Actually, I think I like the darker better, so let's do that. Because that doesn't show up very well. So we'll go ahead and, oh, much better. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take the uh, light Highland Heather. And once again, I'm going to use the smaller tip. I'm going to color in all of the little foamy goodness that the witch has made in her cauldron. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take the dark and I'm going to highlight some places that I want to be a little darker. And the quicker you do it, the less blending you have to do. So I'm going to just do little areas I think should be a little darker. And that gives a little more texture. There, that looks pretty good. A couple of them look a little darker than I want, so I'm going to go back in with the light and kind of blend it in. Yeah, that's pretty good. I go ahead and color the whole thing because I didn't want it a little darker than what it was originally. There we go, and I left a little, a few highlights. So you can keep adding ink if it's not as dark as you'd like. So I like that a lot better than it was a minute ago. Okay, now I'm going to take the light black, basic black stamp and blend, and once again use the smaller tip and color in the areas close to the other colors. I don't want to use the big brush just yet. I'm going to use it here in a minute because this bigger part of the cauldron takes a lot longer with the little tip. So I'm just filling in all the areas around the purple. Get that all done. Okay. 
Okay, now I've got the outline done. I'll do these little legs here at the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the big brush, the brush tip, because this will cover up the rest of the pot a lot faster. Okay, and I'm going to go in with the dark black, just kind of fill in a couple areas I think should be a little darker. Maybe a little bit underneath the foam because I'd probably cast a shadow. Do that a little bit. This kind of gives it more of a 3D effect, putting it around here. Kind of makes it look like the foam is actually coming over the cauldron. This looks like it needs a little bit more. That's pretty good. I don't need to put too much. So that's how you, um, you color that one, and you're going to color this other one the same way. So I'll just try and get it colored and speed up the film again. Okay, that looks pretty good. All the coloring's done. Take that back. I forgot when I made this, I thought it looked a little flat. So I decided to take my clear Wink Estella, and shake it up before you use it, and color over the little concoction that the witch is making. So I decided I want that to be a little sparkly. Maybe a little hard to tell in the video, but it is sparkling up. It looks really neat. Kind of gives it more finished look. And it also darkens it up a little bit. And I went ahead and did that with a fire, too. If you want to do the whole thing, you could even make the cauldron glittery, too, if you wanted to. But I decided just to do the purple part and then the flames at the bottom. Okay. Hopefully I can get this in the light a little bit. You might be able to see it a little bit. But it really does set it off. It looks really nice. Okay, now we're going to die cut these out. So I'm going to get these out of the way. Bring my big shot in. And I'm going to use the magnetic platform standard cutting pad. Put the paper down. And then put the die on top. Get that centered. It really lines up pretty good. Put the standard cutting pad over. And cut it out. And there you go. Now I'll have to cut out the next one. Okay, I got those die cut. Now I'm going to bring in my grid paper again. Oh, and I we talked about this last time I made a video. This is some new grid paper. It's made to fit perfectly in the Stamparatus. It's now available for you to purchase. It, it's a nice little thing when you're using the photopolymer and you have to cover up the grid that's on the magnet inside the st uh, Stamparatus. This way you can put this on top of the black mat and still have a grid to be able to line your things up a little straighter. So it's a nice little addition. But I like using it for my videos too because it's just the right size. So I've got the cauldrons done. Now I'm going to bring in a piece of basic black cardstock. This is a three and three quarter, I'm sorry, one and a quarter by three and a half. And I'm going to bring my stamp and trimmer in. I'm not going to be cutting. I'm going to, when you get your stamp and trimmer, it comes with the cutting blade and a scoring blade. So I'm going to put this one down here because we're going to use the scoring blade. And what I'm going to do with the three and a half inch side along the top and bottom, I'm going to score both sides at one and a quarter. Now, since I'm right handed, I like to use this one here, and the very last line here is one and a quarter. So I'll just kind of line that up with the one and a quarter, score it, turn it around, and do it again. Now, when I make boxes, I usually use my uh, Simply Scored scoring tool, but when you just need to make two little ones like that, it's a little easier just to use the trimmer. So there we've got the score lines. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish these. Grab my bone folder. 
just so it's ready to go. And that's it there. Now I'm going to take some snail adhesive and I'm going to cover up, not really not cover up, more just put along the side and top and bottom of the square on the end. Then I'm going to turn this over and I have found it's easier to line it up this way. You kind of want these little poke, pokey things, I guess you could say, <laughs> the things that are sticking out right here to show. So it's kind of going to line up with the top of those, kind of like right there. So let me see if I can do this at an angle. Hold this in place, bring it up. So it's kind of next to those. There we go. That looks pretty good. So that lines up pretty good. Might want to, I did angle it a little bit. Let's see if I can fix that a little bit. Because if you notice, didn't quite get this side up high enough. So we'll do a little adjusting. Sometimes if you're really careful, you can get the snail to come back up. Much better. There we go. So I lifted that up a little bit. Now we'll hurry up and do it on this side. We can take the adhesive, put it on the side, top and bottom. And I can, I'll show you the other way you can do it. You can do it from the front here. And you want... Um, the bottom of the score line to line up with the little legs of this. That got it up a little high. See, this is why I like to do it the other way. Let's do it the other way. It's a lot easier to line up. So I'll make it so it's right. That both of these little extensions here are on both sides of it, and the corners are at the top. There we go. See, that went on a lot better doing it that way. Now we've made the little base, and we're going to put a little bubble boil toil and trouble. I took a two inch by one inch piece of Whisper White, bring my memento pad back in, stamp this around the middle. It doesn't have to be exact because you're going to cut around it. I wanted it to be a little bigger. If I made it as small as what I used here, it'd be just about impossible to get that lined up. So I think it's a lot easier to do it this way. Then I'm just going to take my scissors. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just do some snips. And it's about right. Okay, see how easy that was? And I really intentionally didn't do it exactly straight. And it actually looks better that way. And I wanted a little bit of color around it. So I'm going to take my dark pumpkin pie. Take the brush tip. And just kind of go along edge of the cardstock just a little bit and that makes it so it almost looks like there's a mat around it. It gives a little more color. Now I'm going to take my mini dimensionals and I'm going to put one on each end and I'm going to stick it, take the first take the paper backing off. I'm going to stick it on one of my the one I've decided I want to be my front. We're going to do with this one. I'm going to put a little bit of an angle. I tend to do things just a little off because if you don't, if you want it perfectly straight, then it's going to look crooked. So this way it makes it look like, oh, that looks good. <laughs> don't have to obsess over it. Okay, now I'm going to take a three inch piece of our black three eighths inch glittered organdy ribbon. I just love this ribbon. The glitter is so cool. What I'm going to do is take a mini glue dot and kind of put it in close to the center of the ribbon. doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to fold this in half and have that glue dot keep it together. Then I'm going to put another glue dot on one side of it and then stick it on the back right here. I decided to do this because that way they can grab a hold of their candy. It's a little hard to pick up without the ribbon, so it's nice to have that ribbon on there. So got that on there. I'm going to take glue dots again. I'm going to put one on both corners of the black. Oops, didn't get that one picked up. There we go. And I'm going to put one right on the ribbon too. There we go. Now before I put it together, I'm going to grab my little Hershey Nugget. 
I'm going to put some snail right across this middle section, stick it on. They'll still be able to take it off pretty easy, but this will make it so it stays in place until you hand it to them. And you're going to bring this together and pinch both sides together. You're going to line up the cauldron as the best you can because this, this is angled a little bit, so it doesn't line up completely with each other. It's real close. Nobody's going to tell the difference. That's another nice thing with the rib, and you can't see this little hump out from the other side. because It's kind of over here, and this one's over here. kind of hides that a little bit. And I like to always, you don't have to, but I always like to cut the ribbon ends at an angle. There we go. Turn this over, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the project. You can whip these out really quick. If you're a teacher and just want to give a little treat out, they'd be, the kids would love it. So I hope you come back to see my videos next week. If you want to be notified every time I do a video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me at my createwithchristy.com site. I also have a Facebook page, Instagram account, and a Pinterest page. And you can get the links for that in the description below in the video. And I'll also include all of the dimensions of the paper I used and the supply list. You can make these for yourself at home. And you don't want to miss my doily rewards program that I started this year. The Stampin' Up! year just started on Monday. And I thought I decided to do something different with my online order thank you gift. And make sure to go check that out at my www.createwithchristy.com site. And I'll go ahead and put a link for that underneath, too. Because if you can collect 10 doilies with your orders, you'll get a $50 shopping spree free on me. And I'll even pay for the shipping and tax. So make sure you don't miss out on that. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.